If everyone knew how uh, difficult it was to be a monk, no one would want to be a monk. But if, if everyone knew the uh, glory in heaven for being a monk, everyone would want to be a monk. A monk is supposed to work on his own salvation. It's like St. Seraphim said, acquire the spirit of peace and thousands around you will be saved. There's a phrase that a monk will often use just to help themselves spiritually and just say, okay, thanato, that is in Greek, death is the only thing that's going to separate me from the monastery. There was nothing here, nothing, cactus and desert. My main impression when I first came here was I'd never seen so much dust in my life. And no water, and that was another miracle. With our elders' prayers, he felt drawn to a site where there was water, and uh, where there wasn't water now, there's you know billions of gallons of water later. This monastery started in 1995, and I came the next year. Our elder monk here, he was in an isolated uh, region of monasteries on a virtual island in Greece, Mount Athos, the peninsula. As it were, came down from the mountain only out of love and to realize out of a great need and hunger that people had for spirituality in this country. Obviously there were difficulties, but we started with six monks who were taken from Mount Athos, also from this region of monasteries. And oh my goodness, in the first years, so much of it was hand work. When something's needed, we find a way to do it. And usually that's a way that we can do it ourselves. So the abbot says, we need cabinets here. Okay, I can make cabinets. Did we you know that it. from your previous life? Did no. you have that skill? No, learned it all in the monastery. Now the, uh, the winter is finishing and all the greens, the lettuce, the broccoli, the cauliflower, the greens, the horta, they're all finishing with the winter and we're getting ready for the spring, for the tomatoes, the peppers. I stopped counting the trees we planted after about a thousand. We grew slowly by slowly and we'll continue to grow. By God's grace, we're 55, 56 monks now. We dedicate most of the night to prayer, and we pray for everybody. We pray for ourselves, we pray for the, the people that come here, we pray for the a whole Christian community, we pray for the world. People who aren't Orthodox, who aren't even Christian sometimes, that may give us much uh, help on everything we do, because they respect what we're doing. We all show up in one way or another, and again, in jeans and a t-shirt, just uh, as a visitor. People come when they're 16 years old, some people come when they're 80 years old, and they have different uh, reasons and, and gifts. Maybe things, events that happened to your life led mm -hmm. you to believe that this is more appropriate for you than being married uh, and having a family and going to the parish churches. You just feel that the, the, the worldly life uh, starts becoming less of a priority and living for God becomes more and more a priority. For me, it was pretty clear, so I uh, just left the, the world and came to uh, to my Yerunda here at uh, St. Anthony's. <laughs>
temptations all the way our whole your whole life for monks or lay people we're always struggling even saints all you know are uh, struggling and there's no shame in either uh, finally becoming a monk nor not becoming a monk it's a journey so anything's possible if one takes you know takes the, the steps of the journey anyone can do it if they want it enough if you don't want it enough no matter how strong how smart you are you're not going to make it. And so I sort of came from far, as far away as I possibly could have come from being an Orthodox monk. If a person wants God, they want God. It doesn't matter if they're Greek or Swahili or, you know, it doesn't make any difference. What is impossible with man is possible with God. Millions of people Very are going cool. out to try to save the world. The thing is, I'm dealing with the, the boss. It's getting caught up too much in the tide and change of daily events. Um, excites one too much so as not to perhaps see the events as clearly as one could, rather than going within himself and seeking understanding from God for the human condition. Where words and actions can't reach to people, God sometimes can. It doesn't help to deal with the, the, the underlings. Mm. You go to the number one, and he takes care of the problems. That's all God's waiting for, is a chance to express his love and, and mercy. And so the tradition of prayer is exactly that, just um, sort of in a human sense, we'd say pulling on God's heartstrings. You know, the spiritual life is not about finding happiness. It's uh, more like uh, uh, finding humility and, and, and repentance, you know, and, and, and cleaning out your heart and, and, and having, uh, becoming closer and closer to God. And you uh, find uh, uh, joy and uh, sorrow at once, you know, for our sinfulness and to be with God at the same time. Is a monk allowed to be happy? <laughs> if not, I'm in big trouble. Frankly, I look at my life and all of the things that God delivered me from for no reason. There's no logical reason why he's sacrificed for me, and yet he did. And he does on a daily basis. So how can I not be happy? nothing but love for all of his creation. It's only us by our own will. God gave us a self-will. Instead of using it to love our neighbor, to help other people, to uh, understand the beauty our creator and the love he has for us, we turned away for selfish reasons. Love has no meaning when there is not freedom. Because if, we're, if you're forced to do something, or if you just love someone without having any kind of struggle or any choice to make, then it does, it's meaningless. It's not love anymore. It's, just not, it's just the way it is.